But the, the difficulty with the work that he's doing is that he's doing studies in these wells in these various villages, um, including actually some towns in Nevada here as well. And, you know, he came to the realization that, my goodness, we're finding all of these health effects from the arsenic that these people are drinking in their, their water. We've got to find some way to give them clean water that they can drink to prevent future disease. And so he and his wife actually started a, a wonderful little nonprofit called Project Well, and it gives families in these little villages uh, a source, a little private well, and a source for clean water. And every time I talk to him about his work that he's doing there, it just drives home the point for me how much we take for granted in this country the ability to just turn on the faucet and have clean water to drink, right? We don't even have to think about it. We don't give it a second thought. Our good old East Bay mud takes care of us and we have practically unlimited water at any time. That's not the case for most people in the world even today, much less humans throughout the course of history. The idea, uh, and not even the idea, but the practical reality of finding a clean source of water to drink from is a major, major priority for human beings throughout the entire world. And so we come to get a little sense of why Christ uses this image of water throughout the gospel. We will hear coming up soon gospel readings on the Feast of Mid-Pentecost, on the Sunday of the Samaritan Woman, on the Sunday of the, the um, blind man with the, the spittle, the Sunday of the paralytic and the waters that are stirred up. This image of water over and over again and Christ saying, come to me, let me give you the living water to drink. In many ways, you can think of if the Lent, Lenten period, the Lenten fast, was a way of preparing ourselves for the feast of Christ's death and resurrection. This Paschal period that we are in is in fact a preparation for the feast of Pentecost when he, Christ, and, uh, you know, from his Father, will pour out the Holy Spirit upon us and upon all flesh and upon the entire world. Christ said, I must go so that another comforter, another paraclete can come. We read that on Holy Thursday in the first of the 12 Gospels. And he says, go to Jerusalem and wait, right? Wait for me. And they're in this period of waiting for the Holy Spirit, and so too are we. And so the church takes this uh, day, the Friday of Bright Week, to remind us of one important facet of all of this, which is in the same way that the Mother of God is the source, in a sense, and in a very real way, of the flesh of her Son, right? And it was through her that Christ came into the world. Then so too, her yes to God, her consent to give birth to the Messiah, also makes possible the gift of the Holy Spirit on the world, right? She sets all of that in motion by her saying yes to God. And so we can truly call her then the life-giving spring of that water, that living water of the Holy Spirit in the world. And so as we spend the course of the next uh, just less than 50 days now, preparing for the Feast of Pentecost and asking again for God to send the Holy Spirit down upon us, upon our parish, upon the entire world, upon all people. In fact, the, the prayers that Father will read, those kneeling prayers on Pentecost, pray for the Holy Spirit to be poured out on all people who have ever lived, past, present, and future, and even on the souls in hell, we ask for the Holy Spirit to be poured out upon everyone. And so as we spend this time praying for the Holy Spirit in anticipation of that living water which will give us, uh, quench our thirst and give us everything that we need, let us 
come back to the mother of God and ask her to prepare our hearts, to soften our hearts, to say, mother of God, Panaya, allow us to say yes to God the way that you did so that we can drink that living water. Let that be our prayer over the course of these next 40 some days as we prepare for the Holy Feast of Pentecost. Amen. <laughs>